There's been a lot of talks lately about Xiao and Shenha ending up in a weird spot and this video is going to address the whole situation. I think it's impossible to start this video without first taking a look at Yunjin and the unique position she might put you in. So if you have been living under the rock for the past few days, during the 2.4 livestream, like usual, there was an announcement about the banners and the new characters, which I'll get into later in the video, but something that really stood out from the rest of the livestream was the fact if you participate in the main event, you have the possibility to obtain Yunjin as a free reward. I mean, that's kind of insane because if you think about it, new characters are a huge deal for this game and this is isn't Aloy we're talking about, where everyone who got her and then at the same time forgot about her, this is someone that literally has a separate voice actress just to do the singing part. And more importantly, there are several things worth considering now that she's up for grabs for anyone who bothers with the 2.4 Lantern Ride Festival. So first of all, yes, she is another niche support character who specializes in boosting normal attack damage, not charged, not plunging, just normal. And on top of that, the way she boosts is by using her bursts, which then takes her current defense and applies the bonus damage on every normal attack. What this basically tells me is that not only is she extremely specific, but building her is also going to be a little bit different since unlike Goro, who only provides a base defense boost that can only be improved through leveling his skill, in Yunjin's case, her defense is taken into account for the actual bonus, which means it is more than likely running triple defense main stats on her Sans, Goblet and Circlet, as well as using the newest Husk of Opulent Dream set might just be something a lot of people will go for. I mean, obviously, it depends on how good her own damage multiplier are, how much energy she needs or generates and so on, but with the recent trend of Toma, Goro and Sayu showcasing their lackluster damage potential, it's more than likely Mihoyo will do the same with her. Don't get me wrong, I think she's a wonderful addition to the game and even if her normal attack buffing turns out to be decent enough, she's easily going to get future proofed, seeing how there's already characters like Yoimiya, Kokomi and Noel who are going to be able to take advantage of this buff. And who knows, maybe she'll be a great sub damage dealer as well, without needing to fully commit to her defense build. But at this point, her potential isn't the only thing that matters, because if you do decide to get her, is there any reason to wish on Xiao and Shenha banners? I mean, obviously there is, if you like the featured 5 stars, but since Yunjin is on their banner, maybe just getting her from the special event is enough to skip the banners and save up some primo gems, especially because the 10 free intertwined fates we'll be getting is going to start from January 22nd, and the second phase banners drop on the 26th, which isn't enough time to get all the fates if you want to use the wishes on Shenha or Xiao. It's not the biggest deal breaker, but at least knowing that you can get a free featured 4 star character without needing to wish, and then exploring their potential might be a good way to satisfy the never-ending hunger for new characters in this game. Anyway, I think this is a really interesting opportunity Mihoyo has provided for the player base, and Yunjin herself looks like a really fun character to explore some new team comps with, and who knows, since she's got a parry just like Beto, maybe it'll also deal a lot of damage and reward skilled players with tons of energy particles. But since we're on the topic of skills, I think it's time we talk about something that only requires primo gems. I think we're past the point where you would need to know about Xiao's potential, since a couple of minutes of research will lead you to almost the same opinion you'll find anywhere else. And yeah, he's really a good damage dealer with a playstyle that might not appeal to everyone, but at least he works really well and at the same time, you'll also need a specific team to make him work in places like the Abyss. But there is something that barely gets talked about, since you may have noticed that when Hu Tao's rerun was happening, there was this big question on how important it is to go for the extra constellation. Well, in Xiao case, it's actually pretty hilarious how disappointing his constellations are, and by that I mean he literally works absolutely fine in C0, and the only massive difference you'll notice is after arriving to his final constellation. The thing is, Xiao just like Ito has this similar concept of relying on another teammate to feed them the energy particles, while at the same time they also have a specific playstyle and don't really rely on elemental reactions, which makes them into the odd ducklings in Genshin's overall scene, but Mihoya have learned their mistakes stake and made Ito's constellations more desirable because when comparing strictly just their constellations one by one, Xiao really only transforms into a different type of beast when he gets to C6. So basically, either go 0 or 6 and maybe you could argue his C1 helps him with world exploration and generating some more energy, but is it worth justifying 140 to 180 wishes as a worst case scenario just to gain this upgrade? 
Not really. So the point is, if you do decide to go for this guy, realistically speaking, there's just no reason to get any other constellations besides the last one, and even then, he absolutely crushes any type of content at just C0. However, with everything that's been said so far, this was really the only thing worth bringing up if you care about the Abyss, because everything else will melt at the sight of his crazed jumping, and ultimately, it really depends if you're just looking for another damage dealer, and it also matters if you're committed to the idea of having another animal character feeding him the particles, while also someone like Zhongli or another shielder can keep him protected while he's using the burst. I think it's safe to say that when you see a new 5-star character getting on the same hype level as the rerun characters, well, it's concerning to say the least. Obviously, you'll never know for what exact reason people decide to wish for characters, but there has been a lot of discussions lately regarding Shenha and the type of situation she has ended up in. So she's the first feature 5-star that got the niche treatment, which we've only seen happen to 4-stars only, and basically what she does is that her elemental skill, burst, and even the passives are designed to help about cryo teammates only. For example, after using her skill, she will produce an ice equals effect where afterwards, anyone including herself will get a boost to their cryo damage, whether it comes from normal attacks, skills, or bursts. But this applies to cryo damage only. And what's even more interesting is that this boost will depend on her current attack, which means you're essentially going to want to build her the same way as Yunjin, except it's attack you're focusing on instead of defense. But it is weird, I'm not gonna lie. First of all, if you put too much focus on just increasing attack, you're forfeiting critical rate and damage, which will decrease her own performance, and this doesn't even take into account her own damage multipliers, which we're still not gonna learn about until she's finally out. More importantly, the fact that she is a 5-star that only serves a specific purpose by only increasing damage for her cryo teammates is already a major deal-breaker for some who want to build and play her in more than just one team. Now you could say this is an unfair point of view because someone like Ito and Xiao literally have like one team they can be used in competitively, but we're talking about a support character here, which until this point was something that you would consider to always have better value than just pure damage dealer, seeing how you could use them for various scenarios. And sure, Goro was the first one who truly dedicated himself by just serving defense scaling Geo teammates, but now Shenha, who is a 5 star, is also doing the same, maybe on a less laser focused scale, but at the same time, only something that's useful for crowd teammates. I do, however, think that this isn't something that should prevent you from wishing for her, because it's still not clear how strong she is by herself, and how good those cryo attack buffs are going to be. In fact, I think it sounds exciting to build a mono cryo comp, or use her as a variation for the freeze teams, and there's always future cryo characters who will probably love to have her as their support, so in a way, if you like the long term dedication, Testing Shenha with every new cryo character can become a nice way to break out of the monotony that is the daily Genshin grind. Honestly, the game has been slowly shifting towards this idea that if you use several teammates from the same elements, Recently, the outcome of newest character designs have been rewarding players for choosing to do so, and I cannot blame Mihoyo. Maybe there is a lot of demand for people who just want to run characters from the same element, and if we're gonna see more future characters that empower their own element, well, more power to those who wish to use this strategy of team building. You know, after Albedo and Eula's double batter, I thought maybe Mihoyo will just continue doing this once in a while, but boy was I surprised to learn that even someone like Shenha was now put alongside Xiao, while Ganyu and Zhongli are going to be featured on the second phase of the update. And after reading through hundreds of comments on my latest video, as well as checking out the usual communities, it seems like a lot of people are struggling to decide which banner they should go for. Even if you're a light spender, seeing so many choices can be overwhelming, but perhaps there is a way Way how we could approach this new wave of double banners. First of all, when it comes to these two, Xiao has been pretty much solved, so he's like a really good damage dealer, but for places like Abyss, you'll need a specific team to make him reach full potential, and as for Shenha, while not everything is clear about this exorcist, the basic idea behind her is to boost crowd teammates' damage, and that by itself is already a limiting factor. The same could also be said about Yunjin, she's the featured 4-star here, and she's going to be boosting normal attackers, but the thing is, 
If you only care about Yunjin, you can just grab her from the upcoming event, and so this leaves Xiao and Shenhe into really great choices for those who only more or less either like their personality or wish to build a focused team around them. But here's where things get interesting about Ganyu and Zhongli, arguably the two most popular characters. Now, both of them have their own pros and cons, but out of the two, if you really care about having an easier daily life in Genshin, then Zhongli is a no-brainer choice. Ultimately, it always comes down to preference, but I think the biggest two takeaways here would be that if you only care about Yunjin, it's best to just get her from the event and skip the first phase banners, while if you want to make your team invincible, then Zhongli is a really good choice, and well, he has been basically sharing the spotlight as the most popular support character for the Abyss besides Bennett, Kazuha, Xing Chou, and not too long ago, Raiden Shogun. But setting aside the usage statistics, nothing else is really set in stone, and giving it the usual and boring yet necessary pep talk would be to first focus on getting a character only if you see yourself enjoy playing them, because there's literally no reason to just choose what the popular opinion is, and you're better off to have a team that you love than a team you're bored to use daily. Also, if you're going to wish on both banners, then something like Shenha and Ganyu could be a nice idea, since they both actually increase cryo damage, so maybe some really fun results come out of this. Although, as always, if you care about performance, always be on the lookout for reviews and build videos to stay informed. It's honestly crazy to see how much new stuff is in this update, and while talking about 5 stars is always fun, it's easy to forget that we still don't know who the featured 4 stars are going to be besides Yunjin in the first phase, but that's probably starting to lose relevance for those who have been playing the game for a while now, since a lot of people are patiently building their pity, so it's the 5 star that usually dictates on which banner you want to spend your hard-earned gems. While those who impulsively select and get lucky or unlucky, well, they could care less about the contents of the whole banner. If you're a beginner and not sure where to start, then I'd recommend for you to wait until the very last day or so of Xiao and Shenhe banners and see what Zhongli and Ganyu will have as their featured 4 stars and then make an informed decision. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more 2.4 content I'll be making. Thanks for watching and see you soon.